I'm Lady Askan and today we want to talk about how to animate your animal ears from Vroid. So you can move them for toggles, like this. This was a requested tutorial from Kyotagon on my Discord. We start in Vroid and set up some animal ears which you can find under the accessories category. We add the cat ears here and export our avatar. Remember that you can not re-import your model into Vroid again after it is exported. So finish first all other alterations before doing so. To finish up our export, we have to remember to deactivate the delete transparent meshes and the combine hair mesh. And also, very important, please select the VRM 0.0, .0 option instead of VRM1 because VRM1 is not fully functional as we are lacking plugin support as of the recording of this video. Once your avatar is exported, we open up Unity. And since we want to animate these ears, we need the following versions and plugins. Unity 2019.4.31 F1, UniVRM 0.92.0 and the SDK plugin 1.13.37b. After opening a new Unity project with the version 2019, we start installing our plugins. Under Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and then our first plugin should always be the UniVRM plugin, as other plugins often depend on content from it. Then we install the SDK plugin and drag and drop our avatar into a folder we create in the bottom assets. Just drag your avatar from where you have saved it beforehand into the new folder. In the case that you don't get the layout as shown here, it could be that you try to import the Vroid file instead of the VRM. Don't worry, it happens to the best of us as both looks very similar. Or it could mean that you didn't download a compatible version of Unity and UniVM, which is why I always recommend to use the versions mentioned in the video. In our case here, we actually don't have any other choice because the SDK plugin, which we need for animations, only runs on the mentioned 2090 version of Unity and none other. Or better, the exported file will only be usable if you use the correct versions. As always, you can also find all the versions used in the video down in the description. Now we have our avatar ready and can drag the little preview into the hierarchy to the left. If we open up prefab mode, which we do with a little arrow to the right of the avatar's name, we can find something called L underscore cat ear and air underscore cat ear, which are the bones that already exist in our animal ears. And these will be the ones we use for our animation. To start animating, we only have to include first an animator controller and then switch to the animation tab. In case you don't have this tab already, you can find it under window, animation and animation. We select our avatar and press the create button in the bottom to start our animation. Give it a unique name you can remember and press the red record button on the left. The first thing we want to do is to set an idle state which in our case would just be the unmoved ears. To do so, we select first the left ear and switch to the rotation tool. As you can see, once I start rotating, I get a little dot in the bottom animation timeline, which is our first keyframe. But as I said, we actually don't want to move the ears yet, so we open up the keyframe setting on the left and fill the last rotation with the zero again. This will keep the keyframe, but won't rotate the ears and register this as our idle state for the left ear. We now select the right ear and do the exact same, which brings us to a bunch of keyframes for our left and right ear. Now to start the actual animation, we move our animation line to the one minute mark. You can of course add more keyframes in the middle if you want a smoother animation, but for our purpose, this should be enough. We can even copy the value of our rotation when we select our other ear now. Just remember that the value is likely inverted here. So instead of minus the number we see in the original rotation, we apply the reverse number, the positive version of it, to the other ear to get them evenly and equally rotated, which would finish our animation. We press the red recording button again and can now find our animation under our project tab. 
if you click on it, you can see that it is set to loop by default. And it depends on you if you want your ears to constantly go up and down once the toggle is pressed, or if you prefer the ears to go down only once and then up again once the toggle is deactivated. In my case, I will just leave it on for now. Now, how we can turn this animation into a toggle? We select our avatar's name again in the left hierarchy, then scroll down in the inspector to the right until we find the Add Component button. With installing the SDK plugin, we get access to a component called VSF underscore animation. When we press the little plus icon at the bottom, we see now a drop down menu for blend shapes to select from and animation clips. So first we select here our freshly created animation clip and then create a blend shape for it under blend shapes. I give it the same name so I won't confuse it later. And if we add this now to our SDK underscore animation component, it should link our blend shape with our animation clip. Now, all that's left is for us to export our avatar, and this will not result anymore in a .vrm. This is why we can't use the VRM menu for this export, but we'll instead use the VSF SDK menu point at the top which will create a VSF avatar file for us. This file type is naturally compatible with programs like Varudo, VNeon, and VCFace, for example. Now, to test our toggle, we open up VCFace and load the avatar in. You may get a little warning pop-up if this is your first time using a VSF avatar, but this can be ignored. Under settings and expression settings, we will now find our new toggle and if activate this one now, it should play our animation. My animation is pretty sloppy, obviously, because I literally just used one other keyframe apart from the standard one, but you get the idea. This would likely work better here with the loop, so I can still deactivate that on my animation, export my avatar again, and then try out my new toggle. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. I see you all in the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day.